This is a video demonstration for the Universal GSM. We're going to start with the walk around. You can see the covers are off. This machine is uh, has been already accepted and purchased by someone else. Today we're going to be focusing on programming. The covers are over here. It'll ship with covers on, but we like to keep them off when we're working on them. So we're going to walk you through the steps to create a new program to run. This is going to be the, the screen that you're going to see all the time. This is the software, the, what they call UPS Plus, what I'm circling right here, UPS Plus version 6222. It's organized in these tabs here. Um, you can change these to say whatever you want or put whatever you want in them, but we set them up this way so it's uh, fairly easy to find what you're looking for. So there's a production tab, an editing tab, a setup tab. We're going to start with the editing tab because we're going to edit the program, or at least that's how we can show it to you. And there's these various icons here. When you hover over the icon, it'll tell you what it's for. So I'm hovering over this icon here, and it pops up CAD import. So your first step in writing a program would be to import the CAD data. CAD data for this machine is just a text-based ASCII file. So it's, it's uh, X position, Y position, th uh, rotation, Reference designator and part number. That's all it's looking for. And it's flexible, correct? Yeah, you can change the columns, the names, the headers. It's just a standard ASCII text file, like a spreadsheet saved off as a comma delimited file. Um, most CAD systems will export that. Um, you can even create it by hand if you have to. Once the data is in, um, we're going to go to what's called the product editor. These other tabs are just the component databases and, we'll show, and feeder database. We'll show you that in a minute. Um, but we're going to go to product editor, we're going to open that, one click, we're going to open my product, which is just a, a truncated demonstration we're going to do today, it's have 14 parts. We're going to show you the board, so this is the graphic of the board, and if you can see my board is sitting over here. This is actually the board that, in the other video, that was run, correct? Yes, it's the board we run on all of our demonstrations, so here's our board, you can see it, it matches. Um, the parts that are red are parts that aren't being placed, so you can graphically see what's what's uh, disabled in the program. I'll blow it up a little more so you can see what we're working on. So we're going to place these 14 parts that are in blue. That means that they're active. They're active in this particular program. Okay. Um, so the parts are get placed on the board with the X, Y, and th theta data that comes out of the ASCII file, the, the CAD file. Once once the placements are in, um, you're going to have to. Ideally, you would marry your 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 part number to your database when the, during the import process. But if not, then you would do it after it's in the editor here, and you can click right on a part location. You can see it changes the box here. It highlights to those four arrows. You can right click. Gives you some choices here we can go right to the component database. So this is now we're in the component database and it's for this that particular part which is an 0805 or in metric it's a 2125 chip and then again it's it's organized by tab the various things that you have to set up to make this part recognizable by the vision system so you would tell it the body size this is a 2 by 1.25 a 2125 that's half a millimeter thick um, this machine, since since Universal has a flexible platform, it will list all the heads that it, it can place. I mean, this is just a, a, a fraction of the heads it, it, it could have. You could have the lightning head, you could have, but this is just the flex jet heads. Our machine has a flex and a flex jet. Um, we've got a nozzle called out here. That's an 80 thousandths multi pit multi point. That's what that stands for, 08 MPF. So we're telling it to use the flex jet head with an 08 MPF nozzle. This is where you tell it how you want the vision system to work. It's just a leadless part, and it's high speed, so it'll know what to do with that information. And we, we don't have a preference which camera it uses, so it's going to use the one that's on the head. That's default flex jet on the head. Since we say no preference, it'll pick, but since the on-the-head camera is the fastest, that's the one it's going to use. Going back to the dimensions, if you uh, click a field, it'll show you where it is in the... Down here at the bottom. Down, down there, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, there's help. Um, little guidance there. There's help guidance, and then there's also um, there's also a help 
if you push F1 on just about any field, it'll give you even more yeah. information, which okay. is helpful because uh, yeah. a lot of times you, don't, you just don't remember. So, and, and that, again, that's by pushing F1 on, on just about any field in, in here. So like, well, here's component height, F1. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, it gets a little bit more complex for BGAs, obviously, because you would have to get into the um, you would have to get into the there there'd be another tab that would come up for uh, leads, where you would have to get in and define the bumps or lead positions on an SOIC or something of that nature. The chip is the simplest one, so you don't see that extra tab for leads, but they would all be done in the same place in the component database. Um, after you've gone through and defined all your components, the next step would be to optimize it. This one's already been done. We're not going to do it, but it's called throughput optimization. And what that does is it takes all the parts, marries them up with all the nozzles, and it puts them in a very specific uh, optimized order that the machine can understand. That's what they call it the order list. So we're only going to put down 14 parts. It's going to be two blocks of seven because it's a seven spindle head. So you can see it married reference designator with my component ID, told me where the feeder was gonna go, which head, which spindle, and which nozzle. It, it did that all by itself when it does the optimization process. So you don't have to do any of that manually. All you've gotta do is tell it where the parts are going and what the parts are. The software does the rest for you. So after that's all done, we would save it. Um, I, this one's been saved, that's why the little disc here is grayed out, so there's no reason to save it, but normally you would save it. Um, the next step would be to prepare to go to production. So we go over here to our production tab. We highlight run products. Now here's where we have some choices. Um, once the, the board has been debugged and ready for production, you would just run normal production. You would select normal production, you would select your program over here, and you would run it. And uh, you know that's when you hand it over to your production staff. Uh, when you're debugging your very first board, we use what's called NPI production, New Product Introduction Production. So we highlight that tab, select our program. That's going to that's going to make this entire list over here on the left, this step-by-step -step list, uh, active as soon as we hit Run Product. So we're going to hit Run Product. Oh, there you go. Yep, it loaded our program into its uh, memory. And now you can see it's 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 activated our our step-by-step -step new product introduction list. The first thing it says is, "Hey, you need to put your feeders in the machine, and we need to inspect them." So, um, if there was a bunch of feeders here, it would let us select them. But since there's only one, it's already selected for us. It's telling us it needs to be in slot eight. We've already got our feeder over here in slot eight. So we're going to go ahead and let the machine inspect it by clicking inspect. It's going to bring the camera over to the feeder going to do a zero first just to make sure the spindles are out of the way so there's no there's no interference so it, it always does a zero before it moves the head for the first time why does the machine want to inspect the feeder you're making sure that it's the right part at least physically um, and also that the pick point is centered so that green the green um, crosshair here that's where the machine is going to pick so you want to make sure it's centered on the part. It gives you a little wheel here that'll let you uh, adjust the pick point. So we're going to just, you know, we'll adjust it a little bit to the right. And you can change the, the granularity here. So now we're on 0.01 millimeters. So we'll go back a little bit to the left. I went a little too far. We'll go five clicks left. And then we'll do update pick. So that updates its pick point. And then if we show the component, this is, this is how you verify that at least you've got for sure the right size part that you're supposed to have and that the rotation is correct. I mean, obviously this becomes a little bit more key for a, a part with polarity because that's what the little circle is there on the left would be the polarity mark for, gotcha. a, you know, for a resistor. It doesn't really matter. Oh, I mean, oh you want to make sure it's at 90. Yeah. Out. Um, but so everything matches here. So we're, we're good to go. And you can get in here and you can edit the feeder if you need to, or you can edit the component if you need to. That's what these two, so it'll get you into the feeder database or the component database. So let's say, the machine thought the part needed to be 90 degrees from what it is, or the tape came in 90 degrees from what we it was when you originally wrote this. Mm -hmm. it, this gives you the ability to rotate the orientation of the part in the feeder without having to exit out, open the program, That's change nice. the program. You can do it right here and save it. Okay.
I mean, realistically, you should be able. This first board that you're going to run should be production ready. There would be really no reason to take it out and throw the parts away and start over. That's really the whole point of this NPI process. All right, next up, we're going to send a board into the machine. So we're going to put this on the belt. We're going to say board in. Our, this is our SMEMA simulation box. Simulates a conveyor before the machine. It lit up saying it's ready to go. We're going to say go ahead and send it. Board comes in and clamps. Next step is we're going to inspect fiducials. Um, there's only two fiducials on this board. That's all you need. They're already highlighted for us. We're going to say inspect. Again, this is really powerful. You know, if, if uh, you just had a generic fiducial in your data, um, this would give you the opportunity to, uh, to to set the data correctly without having to guess and check, you know. Yeah. So now it already found mine. You know, it, it, these are coordinates and then a confidence of 100%. But, you know, had it not have found it, you can go right in here and edit. So, like, like this is... Let's let's say I'll just lie and say point, half a millimeter. Let's say we we'll say that the fiducial is going to be half a millimeter. I'm going to save it. When I go back to uh, find it, okay, close it. It's going to fail. How big is it? It's uh, 1.15 millimeters or something. So obviously this is so if you had a just generic fiducial data in there and you hadn't set it up yet, this is what you this is this is what you get. It would fail because it wouldn't find what it, you could go into edit. You can tell it 1.15 millimeters. You can change your uh, search area. You can change your lighting. You can do that all right here. Hit save. Hit close, and then fine. Now we're now we're in Very business. Good. So Green now, is good. Yep. Now we can go on to the next one with this blue arrow. Take us to the next fiducial. Same thing. You saw it found it. Fiducial find success. There's our confidence. We do a set reference frame. That's the machine. Uh, it's going to read both fiducials and then do its calculations and offsets. Oh, so this is like a frame fiducial. <laughs> well, it we were just inspecting the fiducials. It didn't actually read them and calculate them. Oh, them. I guess, I guess. Set you. reference frame. Now it's read the fiducials and it's calculated its offset for, you know, the board being slightly gotcha. twisted. Now we can do a pre-inspect of the parts. We've already selected these 14. And this is again mostly for um, if your CAD data is correct, you shouldn't have a problem with placement. You know, we'll, we're going to turn the component outline on so you can see it. So obviously, you can see the machines in Cal um, and our CAD data matches. So the part outline is dead on, dead centered on the pads. Um, when you get into leaded devices, again, this is another check for polarity. Um, you know, SOTs or SOICs or things that are historically not always the right orientation coming out of the CAD system. Uh, a lot of times CAD systems don't don't match the machine rotations. This would be your opportunity to, to go in and, um, and change the rotation. Because you can uh, update data right here or update XY. You can do oh, either wow. one. Yep. So you can step through all the parts if you want. We're just going to do a few of them here. See, there's one of the 90 degree ones. Now this board has tape on it. That's why it looks milky up here. It's not. It's not the camera. It's it's because there's uh, stick sticky tape on this board. But it gives you the ability uh, to to fix both X Y and theta. Now you shouldn't have to fix X Y if you've got CAD data and the machines sure. in count. But sometimes with D packs, there are some odd parts where. Um, the CAD data centroid is different than what the machine thinks the centroid is, so this gives you the opportunity to go in there and move the placement. After we've done a pre-inspection and fixed all of our rotations, we can go right to populate board. Our start button lights up green here, telling us it's ready to go, so we'll start. It does that zero sequence again like it always does, just to make sure that there's no interference. And then we're going to hit start again. And it's going to put down those 14 parts. There's the sound of reason. There's the first task block of seven. Second task block us up. So now that it's done, um,
Oh, I forgot to put post inspect on. Let's run it through one more time. Okay. If you want to post inspect your placement, you got to make sure the checkbox is selected. I had not, I had forgotten. This one. Little operator error there. Little operator error. So <laughs> now that that checkbox was box was selected, now that it got done placing, now it gives us the opportunity to go back and look at all the placements to make sure that any adjustments we had done in the um, pre-inspect are correct. So we we once again we hit inspect, and now you can see. Parts on the pads. You can turn the outline on. Make sure the orientation is correct. So it's it's a way to verify that what you did in pre-inspect is indeed correct. And then when you're all done, you hit exit. Well, we'll probably see if trans. No, we'll just hit exit. run to the end of its list by itself here. So not only is this board ready, the program ready to go, you've already confirmed it by looking at all the placements. Yeah, this board would be ready to go into the furnace. It should should be ready. You know, you wouldn't have to you wouldn't have to scrape it and start over. <laughs> and that's it. That's it. And then we call the board out. Placements right there. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's our demonstration. Please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.